I get really upset when I write scenes where characters that I love die. It, it's, it's, it's emotional for me. It's a form of craziness, I'll admit. Russell, to me, doesn't exist without Dennis O'Hare because he's created such an amazing character, villain, lovable creature that you just can't get enough of. But it is true blood, and he's, he's done some pretty heinous things. <laughs> We were looking for the best way to have Russell meet his end, something appropriate to his level of power as, as you know, possibly the oldest vampire on Earth. The idea of having him absorb the fairies' rays, which is really visually cool and a really interesting idea, you know, maybe he's so powerful that the fairies can't stop him. It's really fun and interesting that Sookie's fear is what draws Eric there. That's kind of a great, a great moment and that Eric comes in and completely surprises Russell in his moment of glory. You know, Russell thinks he's got it all, and that's what allows him to lower his guard just long enough for Eric to swoop in unexpectedly and stake him. I think it's very important that Eric be the one to take Russell out because um, Russell destroyed Eric's life when Eric was a young man before he was a vampire. Russell stole Eric's family. Russell took away everything that Eric loved. In a way, I've always thought that when Godric presented Eric with the chance of, uh, of becoming a vampire, that somewhere in the back of Eric's mind, he was thinking, okay, maybe I'll be able to get that guy who killed my family. Well, that feels even better than I thought it would. It's blood vengeance. It's primal, it's mythic, and all of those things that you can do on a show like True Blood. At the end of season five, we have fewer human characters. You know, Terra has become a vampire. Lafayette is known to be some sort of brujo. We don't know what Jason is. Maybe he is just a regular human, but you know, Sam's a shifter. But there are not that many people left, you know? They're, they're all supernatural creatures. So uh, part of the challenge has been to keep them human in addition to, you know, having all these qualities that none, none of us real humans have. This is the hardest episode I've had to do for the show. We have more kills, we have more blood, we have more effects. Once the attack on the Vampire Authority happens, they're just, you know, vampires exploding all over the place. Eric and Nora come flying off the ceiling and kill 12 vampires in the space of about three seconds. The place where we end the episode with Bill essentially turning into some sort of blood god monster, we have no idea. I mean, we really don't know what, what's happening to Bill. I think that last moment when Bill drinks the blood is a gigantic challenge for Sookie because for all intents and purposes, she sees him die and then be reborn as something alien and terrifying. Fuck. There are things that we planted that are gonna mean a lot next year. One of them is Warlow. Who is Warlow? Is Jason gonna find Warlow? It's us against him, and that is a sad reality. It's pretty clear where Eric is emotionally and where he stands, and, and it's interesting to know also where Sookie is, you know, where, where she's gonna go. She's always been at the center of everything in the show. The biggest question for me is what's happening to Bill? What's gonna happen to him? Where, where did he go? He went so dark at the end of this episode. Vampires often turn on those they love the most. What is Bill gonna do? What is he now? What are his powers? <laughs>